with it with an in a case like that what would what will happen with that house will the guy the owner just keep it until it falls apart or uh and like that's I'm, a good that's a good question i don't know what's going to happen to it it's already vacant uh the owner is no longer in it and um so I think what's eventually going to happen is, I mean, somebody's going to buy it just for the land. I mean, I could buy it for the land, but that's not my cup of tea. Um, right. I want to, you know, rehab a house. So, um, so that's yeah. an important lesson. What you just said there, there is a shiny object, right? Which is a piece of land that the person was probably motivated to get rid of, but it's not, you, you know, you, you when you focus on something, you get really, really good at that. If you focus on a hundred things, you never get really good at anything. So you you've got a very clear set of parameters of what is a deal and what is not a deal for you. For someone else, it's going to be different. And I think I know me for a fact, <laughs> and many other people, it's kind of like, oh, look at this, oh, look at that, oh, look at this, and then you spend all this time on something that, if you had a very clear yes, no, yes, no list, right? This is my checklist. If it has to be destroyed and started from scratch, I don't want to touch it. And then that's a five second decision. Whereas a lot of people will look at it, they'll hem and they'll haw, maybe they'll buy it, maybe they'll start, and then they've got this mess. Yeah, and another lesson um, that comes out of uh, what I just said is, is this principle. And that is the more I get out of my own way, the more money I make. What I mean by that is, you know, I didn't go look at that house this morning that I'm waiting on the numbers to come back. I didn't go look at the house yesterday afternoon. Sometimes I do, but if I'm working on some other projects, then, you know, I've got a team in place that I trust and I rely on their report because at the end of the day, it's the math, it's the math that makes the decision as to what my offer is going to be, or if there's going to be an offer and the emotions do not need to be in that formula. It's simply the math. So Scott, since we're talking math, I guess I should share with everybody what my math, what my formula is on what's the most that I can pay for a house. And we call that the Mayo formula, which stands for maximum allowable offer. Now we only use the Mayo formula, <coughs> when we're paying all cash and how do we pay all cash? Well, we pay all cash by using private money from our private lenders. So, you know, we can buy on terms, we can buy creatively and oops, <laughs> Scott, I didn't tell you how to spell Mayo. So M-A-Y-O is short for mayonnaise, but Mayo for maximum allowable offer is M-A-O with no Y. <laughs> there you go. Hey, folks, I was, that wasn't even planned. So, and, where, and where my mind went was, where? what's the Y stand for? But I didn't want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> it stands for mayonnaise. So uh, again, we're only going to use the maximum allowable offer formula or the Mayo formula when we're paying all cash for a property. And in the real world out there, most of the sellers are going to require all the cash. Now, if we can negotiate to purchase a house on terms, which means they're either going to sell to us with owner financing or seller financing, and they're going to carry the note, or we're going to buy, for example, the house subject to the existing note where the seller agrees to sell us their house, keep the mortgage in their name, and we agree to make their payments until we find an end buyer to cash us out. But the Mayo formula when paying all cash is simply, ARV, which stands for after repaired value. And the definition of after repaired value is a house that you've completely fixed up and it's absolutely beautiful. So the maximum allowable formula is after repaired value times 70% less repairs equals the maximum allowable offer. So again, the Mayo formula is after repaired value or ARV which means the house is totally fixed up in beautiful condition times 70% less repairs equals maximum allowable offer. Now we typically, I don't offer the maximum allowable offer number. I typically will throw in an extra $10,000 less than the offer 
for the unexpected. You know, we got this guy named Murphy that shows up and you know, he's named Murphy because you all know the old rule. If anything can go wrong, it will. That's Murphy's law. So there's always the unexpected, you know, repairs always cost more than they are uh, estimated to be. So really what my true maximum offer is going to be is R times 70%, less repairs, less an additional $10,000. That's really going to be the maximum that, that I'm going to pay. But um, anyway, Scott, I'm not sure how we got off on all that, but I did want to talk a little bit about the private money and what happens when you're paying all cash. Right.